excelling the arts. It's about maintaining resilience and integrity in tough times. It's about having foresight in the face of increasing cuts and pressure towards private sector sponsorship. What country, friends, is this? Where the words of our most prized poet can be bought to beautify a patron as unnatural as British petroleum. Strange association. They who have incensed the seas and shores from a dark, deep water horizon, who have unleashed destruction most foul on Canada's ancient forests, clawing out the lungs from our sickening earth. My view is that no capitalist organisation can possibly be politically or ethically acceptable as long as its existence depends entirely on exploitation. As such, I find it impossible to get behind any campaign against this or that corporate sponsor. I want the abolition of corporate sponsorship for the arts. Full stop. Actually, I would extend this to a ban on all advertising too, but that's for another meeting. <laughs> so I'm a theatre maven, and I'm absolutely passionate about it. And I know that the, the huge increase in access to um, theatre in London would not have come about without the intervention of Travelex. It's made an enormous difference. You dig deep in travel X and, you know, maybe there are things going on there that are not so great. Um, I have to look at the, um, I suppose, the positives from that. The boycott that is part of the movement, part of any a broader political action, part of organising with other people, that has a lot of power. Why artists have to be the kind of vanguard standing against unethical businesses? And I think we, should, you know, artists and, and academics, we should be that we should be doing that. And should it only be our responsibility? Should it chiefly be our responsibility? Are there other organisations, or should everyone else also be responsible for thinking about the ethics of businesses and good, sound business practice? Would you approach Boots the Chemists for funding? <laughs> okay. Last question. Would you approach the EU for funding? <laughs> okay. Alright, so I mean this is a what in the workshops that we've devised, this is a kind of warm-up because it kind of gets you into the zone of thinking, what 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 is gut you know, a lot of this is gut reaction, isn't it? And I'd like to brave people, round of applause for brave people. This is about the future of arts and culture. We must act. What can you do right now? Just a few little things. Uh, well, we're on strike at the National Gallery next week, starting on Tuesday, and we're going out for five days. We need a support. Come along to our picket line every day between 9 and 11. Protest on Thursday at 12.30 at the Board of Trustee meeting. We will then go to DCMS and handle the petition. Sign the petition and share it with your friend. We've got a week to go, so we'd like to bring it to 50,000 people. 2015 is a big year because we think that this is probably the decision-making year for a lot of institutions on this issue. The ones that have sponsorship from BP are Tate, British Museum, the Royal Opera House and the National Portrait Gallery. And that contract is almost up. So now is really the time to give it a good kick. It's important that we get oil out of our galleries right now because as the pressure of climate change mounts, we need these spaces of creativity and reflection to be ones where we can think about the position of oil in our cultures. And we can't do that when oil sponsors are right there in the gallery with us. So could it be that the arts are too powerful? Or, or could it be that our governments think they're totally irrelevant? They don't win votes, they might even lose them. Either way, we've a lot to do. We cannot and must not assume that the only way forward is more philanthropic giving and sponsorship.